Hey guys, it's Elena, and I wanted to make an Aurora Borealis with you guys today, something like this. And I'm going to be using my winter brush set and my alcohol ink brush set, um, a couple of brushes from each one for this tutorial. So I've already started a new canvas over here, which is 6,000 by 4,800 pixels. And I'm using some photos for reference from an, a website called unsplash.com and they have an app as well. And I've made a folder, a collection on Unsplash that I have actually put a link to that down below that's public and you can go and look at those photos as well. So in order to do split screen, I'm going to go ahead and drag up from the bottom. And because I have recently opened the app, it's right here. If you have downloaded the app and you don't see it on here, that's because you haven't uh, opened it recently, so just go open it and then come back. But anyway, so drag and drop it over to the side. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And this is the folder that I have made that I will link to down below. These are all free for commercial use, these images here. So I've made a few palettes over here um, previously, but I'll just show you how I did that. So what you do is you find a photo. I wanted to, I wanted, I used this one especially because I really like those colors. And you just take it, drag it over here, and just let it go. And you will get some colors. And it's a little bit different every time. This is actually the same one I used for, I think it was this one previously. And I actually like that one better, so I'm just going to keep that. But if you don't like the colors that it comes up with, you can do it a couple of times. And then you can end up with uh, the best one that you like. So these are, these are all three from photos from this folder. And this is just a great folder for inspiration, just to kind of see what sort of shapes that there are. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I'll keep this open for now, just for a little bit of inspiration. And I'm going to go ahead and start this image by changing the background color. And I'll go ahead and change it to this dark blue over here. And... So now I will, in this first layer, I'm going to go ahead and make a snowy background using my Winter Magic brushes. And the link for this is down below. Um, but you can use any, if you don't have these brushes, you can just use any kind of textured white brush that, that you might have. So I'm going to choose Fall and Snow number two, and I'm just going to go to my disc and double tap over here for the white, pure white. And so I just want a little bit of snow along the back, along the bottom of the image. So I'm just going to make sort of a jaggedy line here. Okay. And to make the trees now, I'm just going to add another layer on top of that. And I'm going to go back to my disc. And instead of double tapping on the white, I'm just going to double tap on the black. So now I've got a pure black for the trees because I wanted to do something a little bit like this. These ones here that have some nice black trees on this super colorful sky. I think that's a really nice contrast. So still in my winter magic brushes, I will go down to my trees. And I've just discovered that I've actually named this trees two and trees two again. I'm going to have to fix that and then send you guys an updated version. But um, anyway, so I'm, I'm going to grab my trees number one brush in the black color, make sure I'm on my own layer with this. And I'm just going to start adding some trees at random. I'm going to go ahead and take another brush, which is my trees number two, still in black, and I'm going to add some more. Okay, so now I'm going to go to brush number, trees number three, and add just a few of these. This one I like best in small doses. So I think it can have, this tree can have a big impact, see, um, in a couple of small doses, but then it can get, it can get to be a bit much if you do too many of those. That was too big, actually. I'm going to make this a bit smaller. There we go. 
I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this just like it is. Maybe add a bit more here. Yeah. Okay. So now I've got my background. And so now I'm going to add a, I'm actually going to group these together with my background. And then I'm going to make a new layer and put that below the tree group so that the sky will be coming up out of the bottom and not necessarily showing on the bottom. So I'm going to do a couple different layers of these sort of Aurora Borealis shapes. And um, I'll show you why in a minute here. But to start out with, I'm going to, to choose my, my Alcohol Ink 2.0 brush set, which is also linked down below. And I'm going to use the Ink Pool Edger brush. And this brush, when I first created it, was just meant to put an edge along the Alcohol Ink. Uh, pieces that people do, but actually I've found so many uses for it since creating it. So it's kind of it's kind of a multi-purpose brush for me now. I'm going back to my palettes, and there are three colors that I want to use most of all, which is this neon green, the neon-ish pink, and the bright purple as well. So I'm going to start with the green because if you look through a lot of these pictures, I've got green in them quite a lot. So I'm just going to kind of look through for some inspiration in the shapes that I see here. There's some really interesting shapes sort of written across the sky. So I've got my green selected. I've got my ink pool edger and I've got a new layer underneath of everything else. And I'm just going to start making some shapes across the sky. Oops. Right now, it doesn't look like anything, but you'll see in just a minute what I'm going to do with it. So I'm doubling up a few times just to get that really neon thing going there. And then I'm going to add a couple more. Okay. Now... On the same layer, I'm going to go back to my alcohol ink brushes and choose this one called Heavy Bleed Blender. And I could also use the one called Continuous Blender, um, which is very similar. The difference is that this one runs out and this one doesn't. So if you have a really, really big piece, this is a good one to use. I really like the one that runs out, so that's why I use this one. Okay, so in an upward motion across all of this, I'm just going to start blending until there's no sign of the ripples anymore. But I like using the ink pool edger for this because you do still get a really varied um, opacity on here, which I think is very realistic looking. So just going in an upward motion along this whole thing, also on here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer and start with some of the other ones. I'm going to choose the pink and back to the ink pool edger. Just make a few more. And the reason I'm doing this on two different layers is because when I smudge the pink, I don't want to end up smudging all of this again because that would just get really muddy. I kind of, I like how this is looking right now and I'm not going to want to smudge it anymore. So ink pull edger, add some more. Not directly on top, but nearby following a similar pattern. Okay. And once again, Heavy Bleed Blender, and Blend. And one more layer with the purple. I'm going to go with this one. I'm actually going to adjust that ever so slightly so that it is lighter. There we go. So it shows up a bit more. And back to the ink pool edger. 
I'm going to add the purple around the edges here. Make sure I'm on my own layer. Yes. I think I might just do a bit more green. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go another layer and go back to the green. There's my green there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more green, maybe on top of what's already here. Oops, forgot to choose my brush, ink pull edger. And I'm just gonna go over top what's already here to make it even brighter. And back to the blender again, um, heavy bleed blender. I do want to avoid over blending because everything will just start to look muddy if I do that. So I'm being a bit cautious with the blending. I'm going back to the green because I'm not super happy with it. It feels a bit too choppy here. So I'm just going to run this over just a bit. To, now that I've said that about over blending, I'm going to go ahead and over blend this just a little bit because now I've got this other one on top. And I like that better. So now I'm going to go ahead and merge these together and then I'm going to do an extra effect on it to make it even brighter. Okay, so I just hit merge down on all of those. Now they're all in the same layer. I'll tap it again and hit alpha lock and oops and then I go up to this magic wand up here and hit hue saturation and brightness. Now this is a new thing with 5X, Procreate 5X. You can actually use the pencil to add effects selectively on your canvas, which is really cool. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna hit pencil. And actually I'm still on the wrong brush here. So I'm gonna go into the brush and I'm going to select airbrushing, soft brush. This is just a, this is just one of the default brushes that comes with Procreate. Um, so I'm still, you can tell that I've still got this effect on because this is still blue and we've still got this line down here. So on the same layer where we are now, I'm just going to selectively, carefully add a bit of brightening. So this one, I want to put the brightness up really high and the saturation a bit as well. And just add a bit of variation here. Okay, I think I'm okay with that. I'm gonna go ahead and close this so I have more space. So now that I've got that done, I'm going to add some stars. So I'm gonna add a new layer here and put it down below. And I'm going to go to my Cozy Lights color palette, which comes with the winter brushes and choose the light peachy color here. And going back to my winter magic brushes, I'm going to choose monochrome string lights and start dotting them around the sky. And this layer is behind the Aurora Borealis effect. So it will kind of look like the stars are a bit obscured by that. I'm just tapping the screen with this brush in order to get the stars effect. Don't want to go too crazy with these, but I just want to have a bit of a starry look in the background.
So I think that I would like to make this just a bit bigger because I realized that the trees where they're on top of the colors, they look really nice, but most of it is actually not on top of the colors. So I'm gonna go into my layers and this one where I have all of the Aurora Borealis, I'm gonna make sure that one is selected and then I'm gonna hit this arrow icon up here and I'm going to just resize that so that the colors go all the way down to the trees. So there we go. So that is my Aurora Borealis and I hope that you like it. I hope that you can have some inspiration from this. It's a very easy technique. It certainly could stand to be perfected a bit and I'm sure most of you will be perfecting it. But I would love to see what you come up with. You're welcome to join the Facebook group and share it in there or um, tag me if you are posting it somewhere um, and I would love to see it. Let me know if you have any questions.